Good afternoon, everyone. Thank you very much for coming to uh, this session. I appreciate that. Uh, my name is Hadi Rangin. I'm a member of IT accessibility team, and my primary responsibility is to make sure the software that we develop here on campus or we, uh, we purchase are accessible. So I work uh, with a lot of on-campus designer developers, as well as from third-party vendors. Um, I think uh, that is, I think that's enough, <laughs> my introduction. So uh, one thing that you want to know that I'm blind, it, it happens that I'm blind, uh, and then I will uh, use this technology. Um, I use a screen reader as, you know, on a regular basis. Um, occasionally I use it also for testing and evaluation, but, um, uh, we will dive into a discussion if, on how, and under what condition we can use a screen reader for testing purpose. Today, we will be discussing a little bit about uh, the differences between functional and, and the, the technical accessibility. Then I share with you how and what we can test and then uh, talk a little bit about the screen reader uh, on what type of screen reader we have what kind what the screen reader we have and then things that we have to consider before testing and then uh, toward the end we dive into real uh, use of a screen reader for evaluation and testing So what is technical accessibility? In technical accessibility, we focus on um, the, um, the coding practice for the particular element. For example, we see that if a particular button or uh, you know, menu or text box or whatever, um, the coding that has been done is according to the standard. It ensures that uh, any user, including mouse user, assistive technology, technology user can uh, in the, uh, interact with that element uh, properly. As you uh, know, as you understand that it does not give us a holistic view of the page, it just tells us if that particular element that we are investigating is, is, uh, is accessible or not. Um, on the other side of hand, you know, for the functional uh, accessibility uh, focuses on uh, the uh, functional task that we can complete a task from A to Z. For example, if you consider um, sending an email, um, um, we want to know that uh, and that that function if you consider sending an email as a functional task we want to see that if user can discover the compose uh, button if they uh, can to they can uh, I, uh, see the to field or cc field uh, and then uh, type the address or can navigate to the body of the email write the uh, uh, you know his or her text and then send it uh, successfully or not. So we consider the entire functional task um, in functional accessibility. So this will give us a holistic view of the uh, overall task that we have. So putting these things together, uh, technical accessibility is required, is necessary, is we need that, but uh, for a functional accessibility, uh, we um, need to make sure that the entire process as well as the individual elements are accessible. Things that we want to consider before diving into testing. So uh, as much as you know, many people, they try to minimize that, I personally think uh, to provide, to do a kind of effective uh, testing and evaluation. We need uh, some familiarity with the coding practices and you know, HTML and then ARIA uh, coding practices. Um, we want to focus on functional accessibility uh, and then, uh, you know, meaning that to complete, the, to focus on their functional task associated with the applications that we are testing. 
And then uh, we, there are a lot of uh, accessibility testing tools uh, that we could utilize it to get some data about the technical accessibility issues. Um, just wanted to emphasize that with technical accessibility uh, is required, uh, but is not sufficient. And these accessibility testing tools or evaluation tools, they can get up to, you know, if I want to be, uh, you know, uh, on, on the op optimistic side, I, feel, I would say that maybe up to 30% of the uh, uh, technical or simple technical accessibility issues. For the more complex accessibility uh, technical issues, we need to do that manual testing. And then the screen reader uh, can really potentially help a little bit. Okay, so when we are testing that, uh, we need to differentiate between our personal preferences and how it has been done. Uh, so that is also important that we test that objectively. And then uh, sometimes when you are running into some pages, you see that uh, you know, they have some kind of workaround solution for certain people. Uh, examples that I was sharing with some of my students this morning was that just uh, it was a real example. It was some interactive charts that uh, one of our entities, one of those UW entities, uh, asked us to evaluate. And we saw that, you know, they have interactive charts. So you could get a lot of data through it by interacting with the mouse with it. But as an alternative, they provided an alternative solution, just gave a flat summary of uh, of the chart that we were dealing with so and then uh, the, 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 the it was not even close to what a real user could get from those interactive chart so i considered those stuff those are you know flat alt text for the chart as a kind of workaround solution and this is not acceptable so we should try to make sure that every user they have say same quality uh, of the uh, of experience okay now thing that we want to consider now is, is the consistency so so far you may say that we are not touching the screen reader <laughs> consistency we want to see that, that that there is a visual consistency the functional consistency Visual is clear, but functional consistency, we, we want to make sure that for the same type of interaction, for the same type of um, communication, if they are, if they use the same uh, uh, technique. Um, frequently, we run into some pages or some applications that we see that for just simple, simple questions like um, gender, you know, then the, in one place, in one page, they use, you know, a combo box you know, and gave us, for example, male, female, or do not want to disclose. You see that in a different page, same in the same domain, they are using a radio group. So this inconsistency is important because as users dive into your page, they familiarize with the page, with the layout of the page, as well as the technique that you are using. And once you use the different uh, 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 tools for the same function, uh, then they, they do cause confusion. Proper use of element, that is important. You know, we want to use button for as a button, link as link, and then you, uh, uh, and there are a lot of other, other things that the user, I mean, developers, they get it wrong. Uh, with the keyboard, that is an important part of the testing. We want to make sure that the, with the keyboard, a user can get to navigate in the application, can get to all those focusable elements and interact with it. And then as we are testing that, we want to make sure that users sh uh, should always be able to see the focus indicator. So, so they should never ever blame their eyes for uh, <laughs> for access uh, uh, that they do they cannot see it, uh, they cannot see the focus indicator unless they are blind. <laughs> 
So Aria Landmark is another component. Aria Landmark is uh, in the, one of the most effective uh, um, implementation of uh, uh, Aria widget that we have, you know, Aria, uh, well, can we say the widget that we can, or attribute that we can use. Aria uh, Landmark, they help uh, screen reader to understand the, uh, the infrastructure of the application, the framework of the application, and see that what are the major components of the page. So once we do that, you know, we want to make sure that the, uh, that the, uh, we have that uh, the integrity of our landmark or region throughout the domain. Um, and then we have no orphan content. Orphan content, we refer to those content that they are not encapsulated in a particular landmark. Um, we have seven predefined uh, landmarks, uh, starting with banner, navigation, name, and then, you know, an ugly name for footer that we call that content info. We have another landmark uh, uh, type, we call that uh, complementary search form, and maybe I missed one. Uh, so, some of these elements, some of these uh, uh, landmarks, they sh we should use it only once in our pay per page. For example, banner, we have only one banner. And, and main, which is where the, main, where the main content information goes there, is, you know, it should be used once per page. But navigation or other uh, type of landmark then can be, can be repeated, but when, once we have multiple a landmark of the same type, we need to provide a meaningful label. For example, if you have two type two navigation bars, uh, one on the top, one on the left, you want to provide a label. Otherwise, user wouldn't know which landmark is which, which navigation landmark is which. Heading structure, we use heading structure for the, um, to structure the content. Again, we separate content from the application framework. So use heading for the content. And then the, this is a, one of the basic accessibility elements uh, that we need that. Uh, so they should be hierarchical, logical, meaningful, and complete, meaning that every uh, uh, part of the page uh, should have a meaningful headings. Grouping, you can't imagine how important it is to group the relevant items as a proper list element, you know, an ordered list, unordered list, or definition list. Uh, by doing that, you tell user in advance that, uh, hey, you are entering an area with five items. And then uh, that, the, that, that you user can see the beginning of that list and end of that, that list. And if they are not interested, the screen reader program, they provide functionality to bypass that segment altogether. Graphics, we, we check for the graphic and graphic, this is something that we, this is again, another basic uh, poster child of accessibility. So uh, we want that uh, any, uh, meaningful any any image any that that provide uh, uh, convey any message um, should have a meaningful uh, alt text. Alt text is uh, providing good alt text is an art, and then uh, so it requires it. You know we need to have practice, we need to practice uh, to, to provide good alternative text. And forms, again, another complicated, it can be as simple as radio button or a simple button or checkbox, or they could, could be also complicated widgets. Uh, like a menu, like uh, expand collapse or, or the disclosure, or carousel and other complicated widgets. So of course we all we check that for the error handling. You know how uh, program the application handles errors. So we uh, purposely generate some errors, and we want to see that if the user can discover and recover from that error. 
so far about the basic things that we check. So type of the, the, the screen reader that we have in the market in the North America, uh, in Windows, we have NVDA, we have JAWS, and uh, we have Narrator. JAWS is a commercial one, as existed for, so from the beginning of Windows, and then um, uh, it costs money. Um, NVDA is a free, um, uh, and then Narrator is the built-in uh, screen reader from Windows. Windows has neglected the narrator for many, many years, but in the past three years, they really worked on hard on it and then it, they made it better. For Mac and then iOS, we have voiceover. And for Android, we have talkback. Um, WebAIM, one of the institutions that has been focusing on accessibility for many years, um, they have been conducting accessibility uh, screen reader usage in the past years. Uh, unfortunately, after 2021, they haven't done that, but this is a kind of a statistic of the, uh, the, the you know, how many, the market share, you know, how many, how much, uh, or, uh, how many people or how many percentage of the blind user are using which type of screen reader? Uh, JAWS, as of two years ago, it was 53. Yeah, and then uh, NVDA was about 30%, and then VoiceOver was about 6%. And then I have a link also to the source for the case uh, you are interested to study by yourself. It is a lot more information. Uh, than what I showed you. So uh, I want to emphasize that screen reader is not for everyone. A screen reader is made for a screen reader user, and then then and it is not something that you uh, easily is like you like not switching from Chrome to Firefox or Safari. It is a lot more than that. You user need to learn a lot of. We want to understand how web works and then how browser render the information in an accessible way. Uh, so um, do not, uh, you know, if you are not, what, what I'm saying, uh, if you come back, you come to me and say that you uh, found some problem with screen reader, uh, very likely the problem is, is is you because you're you are not using screen reader properly or you haven't configured that properly or you haven't switched to the right mode and then some of these screen reader uh, especially jaws um, um, provide a lot of uh, um, functionality to compensate for the lack of accessibility features in the page. For example, you know, if a form element doesn't have any proper label, JAWS is looks around, look around the surrounding area and see that the closest text and then consider the closest text as a as a label for that form element. Sometimes they guess for guess correctly, sometimes they don't. Uh, that's why uh, it is very difficult to rely on a screen reader uh, the findings. Um, I just I want to use this opportunity to tell you that, that on May 18, there we will have Global Accessibility Awareness Day, and then we are uh, uh, having a big event, a lot of discussions. Please watch uh, for the uh, program details. And, and usually we have some in-depth session about the screen reader, or other accessibility exercises. So now when we get to the screen reader program, you know, you see a page as is, you see all those visual elements, you see the, all those spacing and the relationship between items and you know, all those graphics, colors, those stuff. When we as a screen reader look at that page, all those information, uh, are gone. We do not see those information. We do not see the spacing. We do not see the visual relationship between elements. We do not see the color. Um, so any visual relationship that you build is gone. So we don't see it. So 
what is important in, in, in accessibility of HTML pages is the uh, structure that you build behind the scene. So um, we, we do not see, I can say, the page in the way that you uh, 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 see. Uh, screen reader, they render the page in a mode that we call linearized or virtual mode linearized or virtual mode or some some screen reader program they call that browse mode practically it put the page in a kind of read only mode and then it renders the information from left to right top to bottom so you do not see the elements you know uh, in the visual relationship it sees that element on top of uh, elements, a big pile of elements and when i talk elements it means it could be a static text, it could be a button, it could be a, men, a, a menu button, it could be a, a, a table, you know, a table, for example, will be rendered in, uh, each cell will be on one line. So a screen reader can easily read down the page, but the order that they read is just from left to right, top to bottom. It, I mean, again, that is the most difficult concept uh, of understanding how a screen reader works. So, but remember these two terms or this, this term, browse, virtualize, or linearize mode. Practically, the, each element is extracted and, and, and then put on top of each other. Uh, uh, and then a uh, screen reader can read the page and understand that. So if you make something and a heading, that attribute, is maintained with that element. So I can see that, for example, uh, the University of Washington, I see it as a text, but schemes tell me it is a heading one. I can see, for example, there is a graphic. Uh, it said a graphic, but the graphic might say with the alt text, you know, two students talking. And then I can go and see a table. But it tells me this is a table. Before I enter the table area, it tells me it's a table with three rows and five columns. And then it renders each cell one by one. So I see that, for example, column one header, column two header, column three, column four, column five, followed by the data cell. For example, you know, data cell one, data cell two, and, and so on. Um, yes, in that mode, when everything on top of each other, we do not see the relationship, but the structure is behind the scene. So a screen reader provides me with some mechanism to interact with the table. Even they are piled on top of each other or built on top of each other, but behind the scene, there is a table. So it gives me the option to use a special navigation uh, keys uh, you, the, to to navigate in that table, go left to right, top to bottom. And if the table is properly made, so if I go to a particular cell, it reads the cell uh, value followed by the column header. So I know exactly where I am and what that specific value is associated with. So the same thing with the list. I mentioned that earlier, when you are uh, reading a list, it tells you a list of, for example, five or six items, and then you can say, when you arrow down, you see the item one, item two, item three, and then along the way, if you know that the, I don't, you don't care for this uh, group of items, you know, you can press another uh, shortcut key, bypass that list, go to the next bigger object. So page discovery is difficult, um, especially if it is not done properly, if it uh, is not accessible. Um, so we use techniques, if we use, for example, landmark uh, navigation, and then um, the, to see that, hey, what are the major components of this page? And then once identify the main region where the most, uh, the, the main content should go, when I find it, then I check for the headings. Uh, then the, those headings should provide some uh, structure, uh, some, some information about the page. Once we are in a reading mode, 
uh, or linearized mode or virtual mode. So I am adding four synonyms <laughs> for there are synonyms. Uh, linearized mode, virtual mode, browse mode, reading mode. All of them are the same. So depending on what the screen reader you are using, they, they use that. <clears throat> On the other hand, we have also, we call that application mode or form mode or interactive mode. I'll, I'll say the same in the active, in the form mode or interactive mode. It is like regular mode. I mean, like you see on the screen, you can only tab to the focusable element. If, if you have some static text and that text is not focusable, if you press tab, you will completely bypass it. So you do not, even as a screen reader, you do not know there you missed something. So that's why it is very important uh, that uh, uh, that for a screen reader user to be in a reading mode to uh, discover the page, to discover, hey, what we have here. And once they familiarize themselves with the page, then maybe in future visit, they can be in the form mode or interactive mode and, and take care of the business. But uh, usually when we go to a page for the first time, we might need some uh, the discovery. Okay, now do we get good to that question? <laughs> Can we use screen reader for testing? The answer is the, 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 the as we say in German, Vorsicht, yes. But remember, this is not designed for accessibility testing. And remember, that is an important factor that I always felt that you can use it to, to verify an, an issue, but not to uh, uh, determine issue because once you start determining an issue, then you will be very uh, disappointed because some of those issues are related to a uh, screen reader because they are not doing the right job or user has not configured that properly. So, and then you should never use it for the keyword op operability because screen reader give you an extra uh, power to Hadi, Hadi, it's Anna Marie. We're at 30 minutes. Thank you for the <laughs> audible timer. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I appreciate that. So it is not the uh, screen reader, but some the keyboard user, uh, the, you know, cannot focus on a particular element because the uh, developer has not made it so uh, mistakenly. But uh, screen readers, since they have this reading mode, they did visualize everything. They are able to go to they able to go to those elements. Okay, these are additional recommendation here that. Uh, uh, what I mentioned earlier, you need a little bit uh, in more knowledge about HTML and to be able to determine some of those issues and understand some of those issues. As I, as mentioned, there are screen reader. No, there are accessibility testing tools, uh, automated uh, testing tools that they can extract or give you some information about the technical issues. But uh, you need a little more knowledge to understand those issues as they explore more. So we will be sharing this, this uh, slides with you. There are some, I call that the uh, screen reader survivor command. So uh, it is about, uh, I guess I did not include, I did not include for, uh, for voiceover, but also for a screen for JAWS and an NVDA. So you can use, you can see some of these uh, basic commands. I go to this page shortly, but again, wanted to emphasize that before we dive into the demo. Uh, once we are in a reading mode or virtual mode, 
remember the page is linearized from left to right, top to bottom. And then uh, we see the attribute for each element along with the page, uh, along with the, 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 the name of that element. And then uh, in that mode, when you type anything, <clears throat> in, uh, the screen reader intercepts that and then it tries to interpret that as a command. For example, if you are on a page and then uh, if you type H, it searches for the next heading in the order. If you press, for example, um, B, like the B as boy, you no, know, it, it just searches for the next button on, on the page. And then you can search also the, in the reverse mode with the shift and that command. For example, shift H takes searches for the previous heading from that, from your current position. So when we get to those pages, you will see that I will be using some of these commands. <clears throat> now, this is accessible. So this is the first. So I, just to make sure that uh, everybody is awake, I am going to uh, turn on the audio sharing so you can you can hear my screen reader program so i'm going to unshare and reshare sharing sound reshare media controls okay now wake up everybody accessible university demo accessible university demo site access accessible university okay. demo you will start a screen share press f6 to switch between open zoom windows visitors button collapsed okay i am going to slow down the slower slower lift transcription left there and close slower Visitors button collapsed. Is it too fast? List end. Main menu navigation region end. Main region. Group start one to four. If feedback is it too fast? old brick building reflected in the glass exterior of the box. From Karen Crow, she slashed her to everyone calling it so fast. Is it still so fast? Slower. Slower. No, I don't want that you fall asleep again. An old brick building reflected in the glass exterior of a modern school. Group end one to four. I've got comments Previous in the chat, Hadi, that say it's too fast. From Patricia Shetland it's to everyone. Fast. I don't want to hear a snoring. Slower. Next button. List of four items. Slide one button current from Anna Thompson to everyone colon act director. That's a good speed. Much from better. From Karen Crow, she slash her to everyone colon much better. Much better. From Alex Clark to everyone colon that's a good speed. That's a good speed. Good, uh, Alex. I heard that. Good. Wonderful. So we get that. So we make sure that everybody is awake. Keep Accessible them. university. Okay, uh, the, I want a sample page that we have uh, been developed uh, uh, with in, in um, ATS and use that as a kind of platform for training. Uh, here on this page, we have uh, one ac fully accessible and one accessible university demo site dash and accessible version. This is inaccessible version. Windows up arrow and snap assist running applications Oops. list escape. Press escape dash gave me the jog left parent she slash her right parent left parent code dash host right parent escape. You accessible university demo site dash accessible university demo site dash and accessible Windows space engineering checkbox not checked. Escape escape engineering checkbox not checked. Accessible university okay. demo site. Um, has window removed alt space for maximizing? Somehow it is kind of mess. Um, this is an inaccessible version. Visit Seattle, Washington, vertical. Accessible. And this is an accessible version. I am being told the visually are, they are almost identical. But first, I show you the accessible version. See that how I discovered this page. I discovered this page, you know, by first. Same page, accessible university, demo access, same page, heading level one graphic. Looking for the ARIA landmark, I want to say how this page looks like, you know, what is what? So screen reader gives me a command, I mean, list of the, um, going for list, check for the list of the landmark. Document regions dialog, regions preview, banner open. One. So it tells me we have a banner. One, demo site menu navigation, one of one, banner. Zero, main menu navigation, two of five, main open. One slideshow okay. carousel, Let's, one of two. Let main, me close, main, close and apply stuff, everything to show main, you the top level. One, the banner, main menu. So the top level 
Landmark Tears menu. Banner closed. We have a banner. Main menu navigation. We have a main menu. Main closed. And the main, which is the main content area. Apply now. Complimentary information. This is a complimentary information. Content information. And content information, as I mentioned, is an ugly name for footer. Okay. So if I am interested. Apply now. For example, for apply now section. I can press enter. Enter. It moves my focus right there. So. The beauty of, of Landmark is that you know, it not only shows me that uh, what, the, what are the major components of the page, it also helps me to navigate to desired section in one quick uh, you know, jump. And then, um, but if I want to explore more, I can. Accessible University Demo Site Dash Accessible. So I hear that I'm going to press uh, a letter H for heading. Accessible university Hadi, heading level one graphic. Hadi, sorry, this is Gaby. I, I don't mean to interrupt you, but we, um, we've we got a split screen situation here, so we're not able to see your the entirety of um, your web browser. So they can, can do you, then can somebody take over and then fix it? Uh, yeah, let me see if I can take control here. Definitely it was not intentional. Gaby the jog is enter. Waiting for Gaby the jog to control your screen. Waiting for Gaby the jog to control your screen. Well, to me, it seems like a completely perfect page. Gaby the jog is controlling your screen. <laughs> accessible University Demo Site Dash Accessible Version Document. Okay, Hadi. I think okay. we are ready to go. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Okay. Same page link, skip the main content. So, sorry for this uh, side conversation, guy. So I am uh, pressing H. Uh, Accessible University heading level it one traffic. It me to the next heading. I press H again. Welcome, heading level two. It takes me to the welcome. And H again. And, and be ready for Spanish. Bienvenido a level dos. So in the content, we mark the content to be to be in a Spanish text, so a screen reader on the fly can determine. The I man can identify this is a Spanish text, so immediately on the fly switches to a Spanish and reads that. So if I read down, accessible universidad abre paréntesis UAS cierra paréntesis es una universidad ficticia y esta es su página de ficción. Es... My Spanish is not that good. Okay, but I but I guess those of you know that you know that it's was Spanish. So what if I continue to get out of the Spanish text, I press H again. Can you spot the barriers? Heading level two. It switches to English again. And continue. AU enrollment trends heading level two. And sometimes if you think it is difficult to follow by H, H, H to go to the next heading, we can call the list of the headings. Heading list dialog, headings list view. Can you spot the barriers? Colon two, bienvenido, colon two. Welcome, colon two. Accessible University colon one. So you see that it tells me this is a heading one. The number on the right indicates the heading level. Welcome colon two. This is a heading two. Bienvenido colon two. two. Can you spot the barriers colon two. two. AU enrollment trends colon two. AU video colon two. And Media player colon three. And and then when it's at a three, then I make that conclusion. This section is AU a video, child colon two. of this guy. So Media heading gives me a good outline and the relationship between sections or between headings. So th these are the really power of the headings. And then I can tell you how, Im Im how impactful they are. Uh, simple, uh, very easy to implement that, but at the same time, very useful. So the Escape. page that I had, in, in if I copy that for you, for example, here, oh, let me make sure that there and there and there endorsement. CNS the left parent grant number. Quick settings dash three view one. Red smart glance highlight indication on page load. Window space US. Allow web application reserve. Virtual ribbon menu checked. Virtual cursor verbosity level medium. Document setting one. Virtual cursor options dot point. Allow web application. Select and copy from virtual cursor. Document set escape. Escape thirty three fifty three. Copy that and go to notepad. Not. EPA enter notepad app. Press right to switch preview. Note. Edit hey, accessible university skip to accept demo list of home before app info As list you end. See it, demo main menu This is how we see the page as a screen reader. That is a linearized or reading version of the page. List of about. 
as you see that, 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 that I mean, this is impossible to understand that on, if, if the, the structure is not there. But uh, Main menu. thanks to the structure, I can understand uh, the page. I think almost like everybody else. So back to the page. Accessible university demo site dash accessible version. We uh, looked into heading. We looked into the uh, accessible university demo site dash accessible. Uh, uh, landmark, and then if I want to, for example, go to the same head, menu list, list, section, list, list, list end, demo site menu navigation region end off, and then interact with those menus. I have to switch to interactive mode because type of those elements are interactive elements. Accessible in the banner region. See that here. Info link. Main menu navigation region list with four items. About button collapsed. Academics button collapsed. I am interacting with my keyboard. And then pressing enter. enter expanded. Expands that. List with four items. Degree AU faculty link. Distance and learning so link. So if I press escape, I expect that uh, it closes. Escape academics button collapsed. It goes back to that menu. Press right arrow key. Admissions button collapsed. To the next one. Enter, enter expanded. Open it. List with four items. Graduate list. The other link. stuff. If I am press escape. Escape admissions button collapsed. That, and if I press tab key. Visitors button collapsed. Main region. Slideshow region. Previous then button. Then it takes me to the next section. So, um, or if I show you a list, let me see that if you have a list yet. On, list of four items. You probably, I, I read that element again. List of four items. It's a list of four elements. Slide one button current, slide two button, slide three button, slide four button. And when we get to the end, list end. it said that list end. So it marks the beginning of each group and end of each group. So, the, as I said, mentioned earlier, the slide beauty of slide that two is button. that when I am, for example, on slide two, when I say that I'm not interested, I press a shortcut key, it moves, it takes me completely out of this menu, list end. Uh, of this, this list, um, to, uh, the end, list end, and I'm ready for the next big object. Heading level two, welcome. Then I'm in the welcome section. So, the, uh, about, how about tables? 11 columns and four rows. The following table key. shows undergraduate and graduate enrollment over a two. I press the letter T, it searched for the next table here. And then using some special uh, navigation command, I can navigate in this table. And let's do that together. Blank row two. Last year, English column two. Last year, economics column three. I don't say because anything because you can see and hear. Last year, physics column four. And arrow down. Hi. Yes. It's Anna Marie. We're at 45 minutes. Thank you. And then I, I, I go down. Undergraduate, 747, row 3. I go left. Last year economics, 727, column 4. Last year English, 400, column 3. So you see the last year English was 400. Last year computer science, 1481, column 2. So thanks to the accessible coding, you know, that that is the result of accessible uh, the, you know, the, the accessible, accessibly made page. But uh, uh, to practice a lot of, of uh, some of those things that we have learned, if I press, for example, B, play button, it searches for the button. It went to the for next button uh, in the order. I press B again, play button. Another belay. Restart button. Restart. Rewind button. Rewind. Forward button. Hide captions toggle button. I press. think I don't need to repeat it because you hear it. Turn on descriptions button. Show transcript button. So, but if I press, for example, look for this checkbox, and for this screen reader, the checkbox command is X. Desired major left parent, S right parent, colon group, computer science checkbox not just checked. X. It took me to that checkbox. I press Space. Apply now. Complementary region. Desired major left parent, S right parent, colon group. List with six items. Computer science checkbox not checked. Checked. First, the uncheck button to change its mind. So the check. I press the space bar. Space not checked. And space checked. Check. I do not don't remember we have any radio group here, but I type a search for the next radio. No radio buttons. No radio, no buttons. radio button. Okay. Um, if I check for the graphic, I can either search for the next graphic in the order or bring up the list of the graphics in the page. Select a graphic dialog. List. An old brick building reflected in the glass exterior of a modern building. 
These are the graphics used there. Creative Commons license. An accessible university. And so on. And so now Escape. let's do the same experience in the other inaccessible version. Accessible university demo site dash an accessible version. Accessible university okay. demo. Now, if I type, for example, uh, or uh, H for a heading. No headings. It's a no heading. Even visually, you can see something that uh, uh, resemble you know, a heading, but uh, no, no headings. Heading. If I check uh, for the table, zero columns and zero rows, not a table. Their endorsement, their endorsement, CNS dash one wrapping the top, 11 columns and four rows, column one, row one, blank. I am in the table, blank, row two, and column two, eco, column three. You see that? Five, column four. It doesn't expand those things. If I go down, 747, row three, 727, column four. So it reads a number, but doesn't tell you what year and what subject it is related. The same table, right? But one of them, the first, the first one was done with the inaccessible version, accessible format, uh, accessible coding. Here, it is not. And when I bring the list of the, for example, graphics. Select the graphic dialog. List one, list view, 120. Carousel slash slide one. Horizontal line graphic. Okay. Horizontal line graphic. Horizontal, horizontal line okay, graphic. So, uh, <laughs> as you see, that I mean, useless alt text for those graphics. Or, or create, or Creative Commons license. And Escape. then uh, it is more. Uh, it's, it's in this page, we purposely made sure that they are, it is not very accessible. It is one of the least accessible version. Or when I get to accessible university demo one hundred twenty demo list of link home. Spanish text. Visit a accessible unit of a section of course bienvenido. Okay, you see that I'm in that section, but accessible university left pair and UA right pair and SUNA university fictitious. Why is the S Supagina to fifty and S Supagina? It reads Spanish in English. <laughs> Spanish text in English. So uh, because this section has not been labeled for uh, uh, with we got the proper lang or language attribute. So these are the um, uh, screen reader, I mean, uh, stuff that we, we tested. Uh, but as you, uh, you know, if you come to Global Accessibility Awareness Day, we make sure that we will have some sessions on how to use automated uh, checking tools to identify some technical accessibility problems. Uh, but at this time, I think for this session, we don't have time to look into that, but I, I, I encourage everybody to watch for the program details and then uh, and then come to uh, to that Global Awareness Day events, and we will have a lot of fun activity there, including checking the website uh, using accessibility tools. The Decennial Web KC track, uh, <clears throat> Now, here is, I think, I think we gave you enough about uh, how a screen reader, we can use it for testing. Um, if I show you the list of the accessibility features, uh, really some of the accessibility. Quick settings, dash cross, some three settings. View, zero, virtual cursor, one, smart glance, high, allow web, select and copy, these three, all indicate all text. screen reader test, uh, as a functions uh, or attributes for JAWS, oh, this is really a fraction of it, not all of them. I think at some stage I counted, it was something around 600 functions that you can manipulate to optimize for your page. So if you are a novice user, uh, you probably wouldn't be able to utilize them because you do not understand them or you do not know how to, what is the best option for you. So, uh, Make sure that uh, if you are rely use uh, testing with screen reader, you use a uh, real user with some uh, knowledge of accessibility. Okay, so if even if the screen reader use a beginner, screen reader use a beginner, a beginner user, they do not know how to uh, you know customize the screen reader. So. Uh, Watch, uh, uh, be careful when you are testing that. So, because you might get a lot of uh, uh, false positive <laughs> results. 
uh, we usually end up checking the code, going to the inspector element, and then examining the elements for uh, accessibility before we compile an issue with the page. So it is 152 p.m. 52. Wow. Usually I don't give any chance to for questions, but we have eight minutes for questions. Uh, we are open for questions, please. From Mel Toy left parent G slash her right parent, CCER to everyone, colon A web developer asked me about accessibility on the web form that has two interactive tools that are stumping me. One is a map that the end dash user is expected to use a mouse to drop a virtual pin. Another is a blank canvas that the end dash user is expected to draw onto using a mouse or on screen drawing tools. The two interactive tools are not going to be requirements. End users can bypass them altogether to complete the task, but it concerns me that these tools exist on the page and I cannot think of a way to make them accessible to a screen reader user. Would the best option be to remove these tools altogether? That was a long question. <laughs> um, if I understood correctly, uh, I am hearing the uh, the chat through my headset. Uh, if I hear correctly, there were two map, two elements. Uh, 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 we are using webinar. Um, maybe um, Anna Marie, can you enable audio so we can hear to more about the question? Yeah, Mel, would you like to go ahead and unmute yourself? If you want. Otherwise, we can go with your, what we understand. This is Mel. How's my audio? And loud and Perfect. clear. Oh, great. Okay. Yeah, it was a long question. I apologize. <laughs> so you said that there are two elements to the one to the map. One was to the other what? I'm sorry, yeah, one, one looks like a map. And the person filling out the form is expected to like grab a virtual pin off the screen and drop it onto the map. Um, and then the other one is, it looks like a blank canvas and you're asked to draw a picture um, to, to help explain a situation. So uh, you can either draw using your mouse or I think there are like some drawing um shapes on the screen that you can maybe click and drag with your mouse to create a, a picture a visual picture that you can submit that uh, when you're filling out the form they're not requirements of the form but they're still on the form and i can't think of a way to make those accessible i don't know of any alt text that's going to make any of those things accessible they're very graphic in nature but maybe i'm not thinking of something um, so i'm wondering if my advice to the web developers to remove those things altogether. Um, again, without really looking into the those elements, uh, they're talking about that without context, it is very difficult to answer that. But the way I'm glad that it's optional stuff. But uh, we need to ask them, you know, what is the purpose of that thing? What, what they want to convey with it? What they want uh, that user? Uh, what is again the main purpose behind that? Because once you ask the designer, developer those questions, uh, then they don't have answer. Some of them really they don't have answer because many times, many many times, I I ask designer or challenge designer with their creative ideas, and they say, "What is the purpose of that?" And then just they say that it is cool. I mean, being cool, having a cool thing there, it is not, you know. It, the, the, the rational is not the good rationale to to add it. Uh, I do not, you know, I I can understand that. For for example, in a GPS, you know, you want to drop the pin on a certain location and get direction, but uh, for you know, so for that, an alternative method is just to type the address, or type the intersection, or type the you know GPS location for that, but uh, without having the really more context about that thing, uh, that activity, I really do not know that. But this is definitely a very difficult thing to do. It um, we do not have always a, a reasonable accessibility solution. This morning, my colleague Dan and I we were participating in a uh, in a meeting with uh, some another university that they, who they, that they had questions about some of those cybersecurity. Uh, the pro class issues that they had and some of the activities. Yeah, some of them are completely inaccessible. Drag and drop 
it is technically accessible, but how many developers know the technique, the proper technique to do that? I do not know that, but there are not too many. Uh, but again, uh, it is important to know that the reason, the rationale for that stuff, and then uh, uh, th that those elements and then come up with an alternative solution. But by itself, drawing uh, as a keyword user, I mean, screen reader users are like a keyword user. How you can draw, yeah, I mean, maybe some certain limitation with maybe a key, keyboard can give me some up and down and left and right, but is it what they want? I don't know. Sorry, don't have any clear answer for this complicated question. From Meltoy left parent, she slash her right parent, CCER to everyone, colon, that was very helpful. Thank you. So, question. How many of you are developers? Are too many? Can you raise your hand and then, Anamari, can you tell me how many of the audience are developers? So far, we have one hand raised. One hand. So, so any, zero virtual cursor any, option. Any question? One fifty-eight p.m. One. So, you don't have question. I tell you, I mean the from the, Karen Crow. She slash her to everyone. Colin will the recording be available on the accessibility webinars page? I'd like to show it to my teams. Karen, yes, uh, if I heard your question, yes, uh, it will be available. I think we are recording that, Anamari. Yes, yeah, we are recording, and then Anamari will be sending a follow-up email and then share the link uh, with you. Um, From Karen Crow, she slash her to everyone, Colin, thank you. Yeah. Um, if no more question, then wanted to would, have, would like to wish you all a great afternoon, and thank you very much for, for coming. And then uh, uh, from accessible. remember to come to Global Accessibility Awareness Day. We will have a full day of interesting accessibility activities. So from Meltoy left parent, she slash her right parent, CCER to ever. Uh, Anna Marie, I missed the from T. Few, uh, the few the last chats from Dalia Island. You can. Oh, we've just From got Lana a Davis lot left of parent, she slash her right parent, okay. graduate school the, to everyone, colon, thank you. Okay. I put the link From Lisa in left parent, she slash her right parent to everyone, colon, thank you, Adi. From Robin okay. Fashi to everyone, colon, thank you. My pleasure. Thank you, everyone, again, for coming. From Cassidy Rush to everyone, colon, thank you so much. Stop recording. We do have one other question, Hadi, from Patricia. Patricia, do you want to um, go ahead and state your question? Yes, um, sorry to get this in late. Um, so for those of us who aren't necessarily developers, like I know a little bit of coding and sometimes I need to tweak something and I can check something, but when we're using something like WordPress and it's just a blogging platform, when we select something like a table and we put that in there, you know, where you just, you're not coding the table, you're you're using, yeah. Do, so I'm assuming that WordPress um, has all of that. It's all accessible when you're doing something like that. Is that correct? And, uh, yes and no. I mean, the, if we stay within the, uh, the, the you know, the, uh, UW template that, uh, that our, uh, Office, I mean, not our office, but it's called that the communication office, you know, they come, they provide. Uh, I know that they have selected carefully those uh, plugins mm -hmm. uh, that are accessible. Okay. But I am really not sure that every component that they have uh, created or that you find in the WordPress market is accessible. Yes. So okay. it is really important that uh, I think for the, some of the known widgets or so of uh, plugins uh, the, the, uh, that are used in again in UW template they are accessible but if you search uh, and come up with other plugins I really I do not know that we, they have they need to be tested okay okay got so, it thank you welcome
Thanks for coming, everyone. Have a great rest of your day.